Today's Mass is offered for Jim Powell's. Entrance Antiphon. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me. For you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the truth who sets us free. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are life eternal. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live. I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is found forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. The Spirit, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go, to, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly. The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her out in the distance comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, good morning. Um, It's actually afternoon when I'm offering this Mass, but most of you will be watching it on Sunday morning, so I want to extend uh, my heartfelt blessings, good wishes, prayers, and love to all of my beloved faithful who are watching this Mass and who are worshiping in spirit and truth, united in spirit if we're not united physically in place. So in the reading of the raising of Lazarus, there's so much to talk about. And I'm just going to focus on three main points today. I want to talk about humanity, divinity, and glory. So first of all, humanity. You know, these days... um, We're seeing the frailty of our humanity. We're seeing the limitations of our humanity. Uh, We're seeing the weakness of our humanity. Uh, We're seeing that it's subject to sickness. It's subject to suffering. It's subject to death. And it's maybe in the more thoughtful among us prompting the question, what does it really mean to be human? Uh, Some of the ancient philosophers said that to be human means to be a rational animal. 
uh, meaning that we have reason. We have minds that can think and create. This separates us, for instance, from the animals. Um, that's a good start. But we also know that we have emotions. We feel, we get happy, we get sad. A huge part of being human. We have a heart. We have this inner sanctuary that, that forms deep bonds of attachment and love. And we have a heart that longs for infinity. We have a heart that longs for immortality, for perfect freedom, for something that will truly satisfy and which will endure, something which will last. This nostalgia for the infinite that all of us have, that we didn't give ourselves, we just find ourselves with, this ever-present craving for, for more. Uh, God put that in our heart. The great St. Augustine said, Lord, you've created us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So God and immortality and eternity, they're our true north, and our heart is always looking for that true north. And so when confronted with suffering and death, something in our heart rightly rebels against that. We, we, we say, no, that can't be what we were made for. There's, just not some, there's something that's not right about that. Something fundamental in my humanity is being thwarted when this happens. So Jesus is the Word made flesh. He wasn't God who put on a human suit for 33 years and then shed it to go back to heaven and said, oh, thank God that's over. No, when he became man, he entered into solidarity with our human condition. He inextricably linked himself to our humanity to the point that when he ascended to the Father, he went to the Father in his humanity. He, he intercedes for us right now at the right hand of the Father in his sacred humanity. He was true man. He was son of man. And uh, he remained son of God, but he became the son of man. That's the mystery of the incarnation. And so the scriptures say he was a man like us in all things but sin. He was true man, son of man, so he had emotions. He had a heart. He had friends. And Lazarus was his friend. And Lazarus died. And so Jesus wept. Jesus was right there in full solidarity with Martha and Mary and with us who mourn over the loss of of our loved ones. Jesus was true man. But now we turn to the divinity. Jesus was also true God. True God, son of God. So Jesus not only feels the pain of mortality and death, but unlike us, he's actually able to do something about it. So he healings, miracles, signs and wonders, the compassionate touch of the good shepherd uh, we can't go more than a page in the Gospels without seeing Jesus extend his healing hand of mercy. One of the main signs that the kingdom of God had arrived and broken into history was the fact that uh, Jesus healed the sick and the suffering. We saw it last week in the healing of the man born blind. Jesus always shows compassion on the suffering. I can't think of one example in the Gospels where a sick person came to him for healing and he didn't heal them. He extends his healing hand to everyone that he meets in need. Uh, so John, in his gospel, he calls the miracles signs. And there are seven of them in John's gospel, culminating in this one that we've just heard, the raising of Lazarus. And it's amazing to see the depths of Jesus' humanity and the heights of his divinity commingled in this one segment of the gospel. Uh, because Jesus is true man, he wept for Lazarus' death. Because he's true God, he can raise him back to life. Jesus doesn't just bring resurrection. He doesn't just cause resurrection. He doesn't just give resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. So wherever Jesus is, there is the victory. There is the resurrection. So when we have Jesus in our heart, in our mortal hearts, the seed of immortality has been planted there because the son of, God, son of man is the son of God and the crucified one is the risen one and all who are in Christ share his destiny. So Jesus is everything we ever long for and he invites us to follow him, to be his disciples, 
to be his friends, to share in his saving mission and spread the word to all who have not heard, those who cannot even imagine that such a life is possible. Jesus is Lord. So then we turn to glory. We've seen Jesus' humanity and ours. We've seen Jesus' divinity, which he shares with us. Now we see the glory. Jesus says in this passage, this illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And last week, similar, when the disciples saw the man born blind, they said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? And Jesus said, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. So it's so that the glory of God might be revealed. In in the holy weeks ahead, and we're two weeks away from Easter now, uh, we see the the raising of Lazarus comes uh, at this late point in Lent, just before Palm Sunday, which will be next Sunday, and Easter Sunday the following week. So in these weeks ahead, we're going to once again see the depths of Jesus' humanity and the sufferings that he endures for us and the heights of his divinity when he rises from the dead on Easter Sunday. The dying and raising of Lazarus foreshadows and points ahead to the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we need both the humanity and the divinity You know, some of the ancient church fathers used to say that because Jesus was man, his sacrifice was possible. But because he was God, his sacrifice was effective. So he says it's that the Son of Man might be glorified and that the works of God might be made visible through him. There's no disease, no disaster, no heartache, no sorrow that Jesus did not deal with on the cross. Jesus is Lord. And if we believe this, if we repent, if we follow, then Jesus' resurrection will be our resurrection as well. There's no shortcut. Jesus didn't take the shortcut. His path to resurrection was by way of the cross. His path to Easter Sunday was by way of Good Friday. Holy Week every year reminds us of that, lest we forget. Jesus is Lord and he is risen. That is the final word. That is the final chapter. That's the end of the story. That's how the drama unfolds. That's what we have to look forward to. That's why we spend 40 days preparing for this glorious feast. Jesus took our sins to his cross and he suffered for them. Jesus paid our ancient debt and he rose on the third day. So this is our hope. So I want to end with this little bit about Martha. So she comes out to Jesus and she says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And yet even, though I, even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus says, uh, your, your brother Lazarus will rise. And she says, I know, Lord. I know he'll rise on the last day. But that's when Jesus says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And I'm praying that uh, just like Jesus brought Lazarus, out of the tomb, completely improbably, uh, with complete, to the complete amazement of everybody, everybody. He waited four days so that the glory of God would be all the more manifest when he worked this tremendous miracle. Uh, I'm praying that we're going to have an Easter miracle. Uh, you who have been watching my messages know, uh, if he can raise a dead man from, from the grave after four days, certainly he can handle the coronavirus. So we pray that Jesus tramples this arrogant, insolent disease underfoot. We pray that he comes to the aid of all those suffering from it. And we pray that Jesus shows his goodness, shows his might, shows his willingness to extend his healing hand even now to us who are living all of these centuries after he walked the earth to show that he is still risen, he is still alive. We can't celebrate Easter in churches this year, uh, but no virus, no quarantine, no lockdown, and no shutdown can erase history. And history says he has won. History says our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Chris Tomlin also says that. We serve, we follow, we worship the God of Lazarus, the God who has power over death, the God who knows intimately what it means to be human because he is, and who has the power to be God because he is. Humanity, divinity, glory. 
These are the, the key ingredients of the gospel. Mixed together and baked in the oven of the cross, these three elements nourish us with everything we need and satisfy our deepest longings. So may the risen one, the Lord and Savior, the resurrection and the life, nourish us, save us, and raise us up, especially in these times when we are so badly in need of him. Jesus is Lord. Amen. As one body of believers, we profess together our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him and all things were made, For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in God's love for us, we present to him our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those who hold and teach the Catholic faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our civil and government leaders, especially those with big decisions and the burden of great responsibilities that, inspired by the Spirit, they'll make decisions that are in keeping with the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who are suffering, uh, sick, mourning the loss of loved ones, suffering from the social isolation, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those who have the coronavirus, those those who are taking care of them, for all who are suffering in this world of ours today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end of war, terrorism, violence, abortion, for peace on earth and the reunion of all Christians, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for Jim Powell's for whom this Mass is offered. May he rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Almighty and most merciful Father, please hear and answer these petitions which we bring you in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and his eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon, everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.